Teleparallelism, also called teleparallel gravity, was an attempt by Albert Einstein to base a unified theory of electromagnetism and gravity on the mathematical structure of distant parallelism, also referred to as absolute or teleparallelism. In this theory, a spacetime is characterized by a curvature-free linear connection in conjunction with a metric tensor field, both defined in terms of a dynamical tetrad field. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Teleparallel spacetimes. The crucial new idea, for Einstein, was the introduction of a tetrad field, i.e., a set x1, x2, x3, x4 of four vector fields defined on all of M such that for every p element of M the set x1, p, x2, p, x3, p, x4, p is a basis of Tpm, where Tpm denotes the fiber over p of the tangent vector bundle trademark. Hence, the four-dimensional spacetime manifold M must be a parallelizable manifold. The tetrad field was introduced to allow the distant comparison of the direction of tangent vectors at different points of the manifold, hence the name distant parallelism. His attempt failed because there was no Schwarzschild solution in his simplified field equation. In fact, one can define the connection of the parallelization also called the Weizenbach connection she, to be the linear connection on M such that V F I X I equals V F I X I P display style nabla underscore v left f caret i mathrm x underscore i right equals left v f caret i right mathrm x underscore i p where v element of T P M and phi are global functions on M, thus phi she is a global vector field on M. In other words, the coefficients of Weizenbach connection with respect to she are all identically zero, implicitly defined by x i x j equals zero. Display style nabla underscore mathrm x underscore i mathrm x underscore j equals zero. Hence, w k i j equals omega k x i x J zero display style w caret k underscore i j equals omega caret k left nabla underscore mathrm x underscore i mathrm x underscore j right equivalent zero for the connection coefficients, also called Weizenbach coefficients, in this global basis. Here omega k is the dual global basis or coframe defined by omega i x j equals delta i j. This is what usually happens in R n in any affine space or Lie group, for example the curved sphere S three but Weizenbach flat manifold. Using the transformation law of a connection or equivalently the properties, we have the following result proposition in a natural basis associated with local coordinates u x mu ie in the holonomic frame mu the local connection coefficients of the weizenbach connection are given by gamma beta mu mu 
equals h i beta mu h mu i display style gamma caret beta underscore mu mu equals h underscore i caret beta partial underscore mu h underscore mu caret i where she topic h mu i mu for i mu One, two, n are the local expressions of a global object, that is, the given tetrad. The Weizenbach connection has vanishing curvature, but, in general, non-vanishing torsion. Given the frame field she, one can also define a metric by conceiving of the frame field as an orthonormal vector field. One would then obtain a pseudo Riemannian metric tensor field G of signature 3, 1, by G x i x j equals eta i j Display style G left mathram x underscore I mathram x underscore J right equals eta underscore I J where eta I J equals diag minus one minus one minus 1 1 display style eta underscore ij equals operator name diag minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 the corresponding underlying spacetime is called in this case a weizenbach spacetime it is worth noting to see that these parallel vector fields give rise to the metric tensor as a byproduct topic <laughs> new teleparallel gravity theory New teleparallel gravity theory or new general relativity is a theory of gravitation on Weizenbach spacetime and attributes gravitation to the torsion tensor formed of the parallel vector fields. In the new teleparallel gravity theory the fundamental assumptions are as follows. In 1961 Christian Moller revived Einstein's idea, and Pellegrini and Plebansky found a Lagrangian formulation for absolute parallelism. <laughs> Moller tetrad theory of gravitation In 1961, Moller showed that a tetrad description of gravitational fields allows a more rational treatment of the energy-momentum complex than in a theory based on the metric tensor alone. The advantage of using tetrads as gravitational variables was connected with the fact that this allowed to construct expressions for the energy-momentum complex which had more satisfactory transformation properties than in a purely metric formulation. Recently it has been shown that total energy of matter and gravitation is proportional to the Ricci scalar of three space up to linear order of perturbation. Topic: New translation teleparallel gauge theory of gravity. Independently, in 1967, Hayashi and Nakano revived Einstein's idea, and Pellegrini and Plebansky started to formulate the gauge theory of the space-time translation group. Hayashi pointed out the connection between the gauge theory of the spacetime translation group and absolute parallelism. 
The first fiber bundle formulation was provided by Cho. This model was later studied by Schweizer al., Nitsch and Hell, Mayer, and more recent advances can be found in Aldrovandi and Pereira, Gronwald, Atin, Malouf and Da Rocha Neto, Munch, Ubukov and Pereira, and Shucking and Surowitz. Nowadays, people study teleparallelism purely as a theory of gravity without trying to unify it with electromagnetism. In this theory, the gravitational field turns out to be fully represented by the translational gauge potential bar μ, as it should be for a gauge theory for the translation group. If this choice is made, then there is no longer any Lorentz gauge symmetry because the internal Minkowski space fiber over each point of the spacetime manifold belongs to a fiber bundle with the abelian R4 as structure group. However, a translational gauge symmetry may be introduced thus, instead of seeing tetrads as fundamental, we introduce a fundamental R4 translational gauge symmetry instead which acts upon the internal Minkowski space fibers affinely so that this fiber is once again made local with a connection B and a coordinate field x taking on values in the Minkowski space fiber. More precisely, let pi, mm be the Minkowski fiber bundle over the spacetime manifold m for each point p element of m, the fiber mp is an affine space. In a fiber chart v, psi, coordinates are usually denoted by psi equals x mu, x a, where x mu are coordinates on spacetime manifold m, and x a are coordinates in the fiber mp. Using the abstract index notation, let a, b, c, refer to mp and mu, nu, refer to the tangent bundle trademark. In any particular gauge, the value of x a at the point p is given by the section x mu x mu x a equals she a p Display style x caret mu to left x caret mu x caret a equals she caret a p right. The covariant derivative d mu she a d she a mu plus B A mu equals mu she A plus B A mu Display style D underscore mu she carrot a equivalent left D she carrot a right underscore mu plus B carrot a underscore mu equals partial underscore mu she carrot a plus B carrot a underscore mu is defined with respect to the connection form B, A1 form assuming values in the Lie algebra of the translational abelian group R4. Here, d is the exterior derivative of the at component of x, which is a scalar field so this isn't a pure abstract index notation. Under a gauge transformation by the translation field α a x a x a plus α Display style x carrot a to x carrot a plus alpha carrot a and b a mu b a mu minus mu alpha a 
Display style B carrot a underscore mu to B carrot a underscore mu partial underscore mu alpha carrot a and so the covariant derivative of x a equals she a p is gauge invariant. This is identified with the translational co tetrad h a mu equals mu she a plus b a mu display style h caret a underscore mu equals partial underscore mu she caret a plus b caret a underscore mu which is a one form which takes on values in the Lie algebra of the translational abelian group R4, whence it is gauge invariant. But what does this mean? X A equals she A P is a local section of the pure translational affine internal bundle M M, another important structure in addition to the translational gauge field bar mu. Geometrically, this field determines the origin of the affine spaces, it is known as Cartan's radius vector. In the gauge theoretic framework, the one form H A equals H A mu D X mu equals mu she a plus b a mu d x mu Display style h caret a equals h caret a underscore mu dx caret mu equals left partial underscore mu she caret a plus b caret a underscore mu right dx caret mu arises as the nonlinear translational gauge field with she are interpreted as the Goldstone field describing the spontaneous breaking of the translational symmetry. A crude analogy, think of MP as the computer screen and the internal displacement as the position of the mouse pointer. Think of a curved mouse pad as space-time and the position of the mouse as the position. Keeping the orientation of the mouse fixed, if we move the mouse about the curved mouse pad, the position of the mouse pointer internal displacement also changes and this change is path dependent, i.e., it doesn't only depend upon the initial and final position of the mouse. The change in the internal displacement as we move the mouse about a closed path on the mouse pad is the torsion. Another crude analogy, think of a crystal with line defects edge dislocations and screw dislocations but not disclinations. The parallel transport of a point of M along a path is given by counting the number of up, down, forward, backwards and left, right, crystal bonds transversed. The Burgers vector corresponds to the torsion. Disinclinations correspond to curvature, which is why they are left out. The torsion, i.e. the translational field strength of teleparallel gravity or the translational curvature. T A mu mu D B A mu mu equals d mu b a mu minus d mu b a mu 
Display style T carrot a underscore mu new equivalent left DB carrot a right underscore mu new equals D underscore mu B carrot a underscore new D underscore new B carrot a underscore mu is gauge invariant. Of course, we can always choose the gauge where xa is zero everywhere a problem though, mp is an affine space and also a fiber and so, we have to define the origin on a point-by-point -point basis, but this can always be done arbitrarily and this leads us back to the theory where the tetrad is fundamental. Teleparallelism refers to any theory of gravitation based upon this framework. There is a particular choice of the action which makes it exactly equivalent to general relativity, but there are also other choices of the action which are not equivalent to GR. In some of these theories, there is no equivalence between inertial and gravitational masses. Unlike GR, gravity is not due to the curvature of spacetime. It is due to the torsion. topic non gravitational contexts there exists a close analogy of geometry of spacetime with the structure of defects in crystal dislocations are represented by torsion disclinations by curvature these defects are not independent of each other a dislocation is equivalent to a disclination antidisclination pair, a disclination is equivalent to a string of dislocations. This is the basic reason why Einstein's theory based purely on curvature can be rewritten as a teleparallel theory based only on torsion. There exists, moreover, infinitely many ways of rewriting Einstein's theory, depending on how much of the curvature one wants to re-express in terms of torsion, the teleparallel theory being merely one specific version of these. A further application of teleparallelism occurs in quantum field theory, namely, two-dimensional nonlinear sigma models with target space on simple geometric manifolds, whose renormal Normalization behavior is controlled by a Ricci flow, which includes torsion. This torsion modifies the Ricci tensor and hence leads to an infrared fixed point for the coupling, on account of teleparallelism. Geometrostasis. Topic. See also. Classical theories of gravitation Gauge gravitation theory <laughs>